Good morning, everyone. Over the past few days, we've been uh, busy putting up a few walls and we started staining our railings and getting that done. And also our electrician started uh, doing some work this week. And basically we had to move things and stay out of his way. So we didn't get that much done. And uh, as a result, this will be a bit of a shorter video. Um, but yesterday I was walking down the driveway and I had a bit of a wildlife encounter. I looked up and I saw a rabbit, uh, which most people have. But we stopped and looked at each other and uh, then the rabbit uh, to hopping towards me. It came right up to me within inches, centimeters of my feet, looked at me and then just started eating breakfast right there in front of me. Uh, munching down on the little leaves and uh, occasionally looking up to see what I was up to. And uh, so I pull out my phone and I started video, uh, videoing the uh, rabbit. And uh, four and a half minutes later, he finally decided he'd uh, had enough breakfast and they moved on into the forest. It was, it was a, such a nice, quiet um, moment with nature and it really uh, was the highlight of the summer so far. Well, now that we've got all the uh, railings in place, the next uh, thing I'll need to address is some walls. Um, this wall right here, underneath the stairs, I'll need to get that up quick because we don't want anybody falling down the basement down here. And then, of course, there's a wall up there beside the loft railing. I need to close that off so people don't fall. And also, I'll need to build a small wall here and a longer wall over there to make sure it's all safe. Now, it's pretty straightforward, most of it. The challenge I always have, though, is anytime I'm cutting things on an angle, like the studs and the plates on an angle, I find the angle cuts a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky.
for 93.5 News City with minutes after 8 o'clock. And we have five hopes from a very successful radio song for the Halibut Park. So I need to build a wall up here in the loft where the uh, railing ended. And it's a small section. No need for a railing at ballast. There's nobody to be walking here. But as I mentioned earlier, I find this a little tricky, the angles. And I just put the top plate up now. It's just sitting there. It's not screwed in. Um, took me about four cuts, many tries, uh, trips back and forth to the saw. It ended up being 40 degrees at the top and 50 degree angle at the bottom. That probably makes sense to those of you who know what you're doing, but it took me four tries to f figure that out. After I put the uh, top plate on right here, I was getting ready to put the studs on and it occurred to me that if you ever were going to insulate, you really need to uh, put vapor barrier in here before you put the plate on. Um, so you have a continuous vapor barrier when you are uh, insulating. Now it's not my intention to insulate, but in the future, who knows? And then it's too late to put the vapor barrier on. So I'm going to remove that top plate and put a little vapor barrier on. Mm, since I'm not insulating, or at least the plan isn't to insulate. This one uh, rafter was really, really messy and dirty, so I decided to sand it down um, since I pulled the top plate off anyway. So this is the last space in the loft that needs to be attended to. I have a short wall here, an angled wall over here, and uh, I'm just going to build them out of two by fours. And right now I'm putting braces up here on the rafters that I can balloon the wall up to.
I gotta say, I'll be glad when working on the loft in these uh, narrow, confined areas is over. It's so short and comes to a point so difficult to get in there. I've wrenched my neck, pulled my back, just trying to get a measurement, and I can't tell you how many times I've whacked myself in the head on these rafters. Not to mention the torture chamber that is these shingle nails sticking down out of the plywood all over the place. Over the past two days, I've got three puncture marks in the top of my head. This um, hat isn't much protection. So I'm, I'm spurting a little blood in three spots. And I have an old hockey helmet up here that I'm tempted to wear. So don't be surprised if uh, shortly you see me uh, working up here with a bucket on my head. So the three walls are essentially completed. The balloon wall down here, the angled wall up there, the shorter wall, and the wall up on the loft. So with those all completed, um, most of the framing work, maybe all of the framing work, is done now for the loft. Which really brings a big smile to my face. Both the stairs and the stair railings and the loft railings uh, pretty much completed now. It's uh, time to consider staining it. We've done a little background work and checked online different stains and went into some different stores. And today Anna and I went out and we were going to buy some. And um, this is the result of our trip to our local store. They were really great there. They We took a piece of the spruce that we made the stairs and balusters out of and uh, she put some stain on all of them the golden pecan the golden oak the puritan pine the ipswich pine sedona red and gunstock and i'm telling you the picture on the can doesn't look anything like what happened when it went on wood orangey red red they all they both look brown on the can almost clear, almost clear, and two kind of golden brown ones. So we settled on Puritan Pine. At least we bought a can to try it out, this stuff right here. And uh, we came home, got a baluster we hadn't used yet, and we put uh, the Puritan Pine on here. So we decided to do the uh, rail up here in the loft, the part that's facing in, and in case we didn't like it, uh, we could make changes for the rest of it. But it looks pretty good. So the staining has begun and Anna did a lot of staining. She did the uh, rail for the loft up there and the one for the landing right here so far. And we used an oil-based uh, stain, a Puritan pine, and it turned out pretty well. But what we did find out was the fumes from it were pretty strong. We had all the windows and doors open and a fan going, but even then, it, it was way too strong, I think, uh, 
to be in here for very long. So we stopped uh, at that and didn't do the stair rail and made sure we breathed uh, good clean air. And then we weren't going to spend any time in here. So last night we spent our time out here. Well, today the electrician is here and he started to wire the cabin and uh, down here at the box he's already sent up four and drilled a lot of holes and uh, he's sending all the lines up to the main floor right now and uh, he's up there working right now. In the first day for wiring the house, this is what was accomplished. Switches at the door, a receptacle at the counter, another dedicated receptacle over here, another one here, light over the kitchen sink, receptacle for the fridge, and we have an overhead light as well. Just got 60 watt bulbs in them for now but it sure is a nice convenience. So yesterday the electrician was here and got about <clears throat> maybe a third of the cabin wired and we have some lights and receptacles in the kitchen and <clears throat> it really feels good to have the modern convenience. It makes us feel like we're making real progress and uh, makes us want to get everything else done quickly. We'd love to start the plumbing and get the plumbing going and have some uh, running water right now oh here's our running water right now i just said you're our running water I'm running all right could go a little faster eh those pails aren't very full <laughs> <laughs> Well, all the balusters have been cut and they've been put in place. So I kind of thought I was finished with the table saw, but turns out I need to build a stair that goes up to the landing um, that takes you up to the loft. And for that uh, stair, I need some wood that is uh, six and a quarter inches. Now they don't sell six and a quarter inches, so I've um, got these two by eights that I'll need to cut down to six and a quarter. Now, fortunately, I still have Stan's table saw. Thank you, Stan. And um, so I'm gonna rip these three boards down to make that stair. So for the stair for the landing, uh, to go up to the loft. I've cut the pieces out and here they are. Um, this is the two by eight ripped down to six and a quarter. And we have the front of the stair, make that the back. And these will be all the uh, ribs inside of the stair. Well, I just realized I've messed up making the box for this uh, stair to the landing. I set it up on the horses here. Look good to me. Some look a little off, not sure just what. Then I started to put the treads on and I realized I made that box way too big. Way too big. It's 12 inches. It's supposed to be nine inches. So my choices, I think, my options are to take all these ribs out, cut them down by three inches each and put them back together, and then everything is good. Or keep one of these pieces on and then cut a bigger piece way out to here from this uh, two by eight over here and have a much bigger step. The, all the, 
the treads on the stairs are 10 inches. This will be 13 inches. I don't think that's allowed. So should I try and see if it flies? I say yeah. So I went ahead and cut the 2x8 and fit it on top of the box here. And looks pretty good. Uh, you know, from this point forward be known as the giant step. I want to complete the post at the bottom of the staircase. This post right here. Because right now it's just a single 2x6. <clears throat> And I want to add this 2x6 right here and make it a much thicker uh, post. So I've put on some uh, PL Premium uh, construction adhesive and it holds pretty well from past experience. So I'm going to take this board, this 2x6, I kind of like its uh, naughty pattern and I'm going to put it on the outside here and clamp it together. I guess you could say this post has been officially clamped. So we've got the uh, three top rails to put on the railings up here in the loft and that should uh, kind of finish things off. So the first one is this rail here going up on top of that and then over here we've got the top rail and we've got to put on the bottom rail. We uh, stained these outside uh, yesterday to give them a chance to outgas and uh, leave the fumes outside. So they're pretty good today. I didn't want to drive screws down through the top. So I want to bring them up through here. And to do that, I didn't want them to be obvious, so I bought this pocket hole jig and you set it up and drill holes and then use these special screws um, to come up from the bottom. And I couldn't see a big advantage over me just drilling my own hole and putting my own screw in there. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not bothering to use these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a pilot hole first with a, a small drill bit and then I will uh, countersink the screw with a bigger bit. Thank you. 